Okay, I, I'll go back to it. I was trying to share it to my page. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good afternoon. I um, want to welcome you to the um, Book Toaster um, series, speaker series. Um, my name is LaRonda Coleman, and I am a uh, new member of the Book Toaster um, Club, and I am here to um, interview one of the founding members of the Book Toaster um, Club, Miss Meredith Coleman McGee. So I will be um, interviewing her um, to, for, to, for you all to get familiar with her. But I want to first tell you all how I met Miss Meredith. Um, well, aside from her, um, another founding member, um, which is my auntie. Um, Ms. Mary Harrison Coleman. She is one of the founding members and um, she um, had a book published by uh, Ms. Meredith and um, she um, uh, referred me to her because I'm, I'm, I'm working on some things or whatever. And um, so I, I contacted Ms. Meredith and it's like I've been knowing her forever. So she is um, such a, a phenomenal person and she um, has done so much for our community and in our communities. And um, I want to um, go ahead and, and, and we're gonna get started. And, um, and I wanna present to you all, Ms. Meredith Coleman, Ms. Meredith Coleman uh, McGee. Um, she is a, uh, a native of uh, California. She was born in California, but then she um, came I came on to the to the sip to Mississippi, so she is officially a Mississippi girl. So I want to go ahead and greet you, Miss Meredith. It is a pleasure to be here to um, to be in a position to um, interview you. And I, I don't I don't feel that I'm um, I'm um, I, I, well. I guess I'm I'm just grateful to be yeah. in a position to um, interview you. So I feel well, honored. I feel honored. So what? Well, uh, LaRonda, I'm honored mm -hmm. that you are interviewing me, and and I want to say now, uh, LaRonda just explained to you how we met through her aunt and uh, 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 Mary Harrison Coleman, and I. We're uh, sisters in a lot of different things. We 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 are founded book toasters. We we are. Uh, I start, uh, uh, we, we started the uh, Community Library of Mississippi. Well, uh, she's well, she's on the board as well. And also uh, she published her book in Meredith, et cetera, our company. Now, LaRonda is a new recorded artist like her Aunt Mary. Her Aunt Mary it was the lead singer for a gospel group for over 50 years. She's been all over the country touring and singing, and she's a songwriter. Now, LaRonda just wrote a song, and she wrote, uh, she spoke the lyrics to the song at our recent poetry contest, and the judges selected her as the a winner of the uh, adult session. So she is in a new field, uh, uh, in terms of uh, music, and I think yes. that this is just uh, timely that she's uh, expanding and and getting into these other um, in, in this field. And I thank you for that. And so, whatever question you want to ask me now, you know, you can go ahead. But I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, this is definitely a new, um, a, a, a new environment for me, a new, a new vibe. But I'm, I'm loving every bit of it. It, it feels like I'm, I'm right at home uh, with you all. So I'm, I'm honored to be a part of um, uh, the book club, book festival, and all the, uh, the things that you all are sharing and um, you know introducing to us. So yeah, I want people to uh, to to know who you are. You know, a lot of people may know you, but then some, may, a lot of them may not. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I was trying to go ahead and share um, from my uh, share from your page to my 
um, page, but I'm not seeing. Um, I'm oh, it's not on seeing, um, the link. It's it's does on, it take a minute for it to? No, it's on Meredith etc. Facebook page. The publishing company Facebook page. You said it's on what, Miss Meredith? It's on Meredith etc. Facebook. Meredith again. Oh, there it is. But I, I see it on Meredith. Yeah, I, I see uh -huh. it now. Uh-huh. I see it now. All right. All right, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, once again, my name is LaRonda Coleman, and I am a new um book toaster uh, series uh, member. Um, and I am so glad to be here to um get ready to interview Miss Meredith Coleman McGee. Um um, she is a, um, um, a, a, a writer. She's a uh, publisher. She just, it's just so much. So we'll go ahead and, and, and get started with the questions. And, um, and um, most likely we, it's going to take another um, um, interview to, to really dig into uh, who you are and, and all the things that you're around here doing and have done. Uh, but we're just going to scratch the surface a little bit and, and go ahead and, and, and kind of um, let people know who you are. Okay, um, Ms. Meredith has over 33 years of service um, as a professional writer, an author, lecturer, publisher, and mentor. Um, she established uh, Meredith ETC, et cetera, um, in 2013. So Ms. Meredith, tell me um, what inspired you to start your publishing company? Okay, so... Darlene Collier. Um, I was working on two books at the same time. I, you know, I've had a, a typing service for 18 years. I, I'm a neighborhood typist to this day. And, and I, um, I'm a resume writer and I'm a, a small business consultant. I do uh, business plans. Um, classic printing on Ferris Street. Um, uh, Darlene Collier took a stack of yellow pads to classic printing to be typed. And classic printing referred the client to me as a typing job. And when I thought, you know, looked through the stack of pads, I realized that um it was not a typing job, it was a writing job. This was like 2000 and maybe nine. And so um, I took a, she told me her story. Mm -hmm. So really most of her story was in her head. So I, I started, um, uh, I asked her to transcribe her story into the tapes and I started over. Um, and I, tra uh, and then, I went to, uh, I did the research and on her family genealogy and I went to uh, Jasper County, Mississippi where she was born. And I went to the courthouse and I went to the graveyard and I went and interviewed her relatives. And I, um, you know, I did a lot of things uh, for her. By then I was doing, a, uh, she started the first uh, rebel flag protest t-shirt in US history. I helped to get it copyright. I did typing for her. Uh, just she, she had a lot of ideas. But anyway, we started Mo's Dazzler Press. And we um, had Marriage Sin published. And then we had it translated into uh, Casada Al Casada, yeah. a Spanish uh, translation. And so when Got we. Got my copy. Just wanted to interject oh, it. I sure do. You can sure do. And so um, I, just, I hadn't started it yet, though. I hadn't started it yet, but I can't wait. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I hadn't it. started yet, but I'm I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to. Oh, it. I, I should have said that's a spoiler. She's a history maker like your aunt. She made history. Um, but anyway, um, okay. So okay. when we started Bo's Dance the Press, Starkeisha Estrella, my book, um, Odyssey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, this is my poetry. Uh, it was okay. I gotta get that one. It was a manuscript then, and we had Mose Dazzler Press had contracts to publish 
Odyssey and Star Creature, Star Creature mm -hmm. Thriller. And okay, Miss Darlene decided that she didn't want to take other offers to the marketplace. Only the mm -hmm. two books, Marriage of Sin and uh, the Side of Africana. So I was forced to oh, okay. uh, start Meredith, et cetera, to accept these two. And my goal was to okay. take other people to the market. And so we closed up. Okay, uh, cool. The press. And I started a new one. And, and, and eight years later, 27 print books have been produced in this office. Ooh. Not on this computer, this is a new computer. But a lot of them, yes. uh -huh. uh, that one, and uh, it was eight years ago that we started Med for Saturday. Wow. Okay, well tell me some of the um, challenges that you uh, faced, because it sounds like it's it was such a smooth transition, because you were saying you, you was, you know, doing the, the, the um, um, Typing and all of that stuff. So going from doing the paperwork and all of that to going into your own publishing company, tell me a little about the, the um, challenges. Just in case somebody is um, looking into, um, you know, starting their own publishing company. Because personally, when I hear a publishing company, and and you're the first one that I I knew I, that I met um, that's here that have a, a publishing company here, but. I always think far off, somewhere way in, you know, wherever, um, in another way on somewhere else, and not locally. I thought you had to send your stuff off. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. So uh, just in case somebody want to, uh, you know, thinking about doing the same thing, want to branch out, tell us a little um, about, about your transition into um, starting. You know, some of the challenges that you may have faced. Okay, so uh, first of all. Um, I reinvented myself and started a whole nother career to become an author and a publisher Ooh. with Mo's Dance of Press. And that was uh, at the end of uh, I like that. 2011, the beginning I of like that. 2012. <laughs> and uh, me and uh, Miss Darlene had great mm -hmm. success together in terms of men's sales because we were so excited to have a book that we really put in no. a lot of work. We were doing like um, eight events a month, mm -hmm. a month. Because when you get in this industry, you have to make a name for yourself. We were getting wow. on great, uh, uh, rock, um, radio blog shows, uh, uh, radio. Um, um, we were selling out the trunk of the car. I mean, <laughs> we, we were just so excited. And and this is a good good sound because you hold she yeah. would hold it up man to see it. I mean, you know, <laughs> whole conversation on that. But anyway, um the the, okay. the, chal the challenges uh of it, it is exciting. The challenges of we ran mm -hmm. um we ran into a lot of problems and we actually feel that we were discriminated against and definitely underrepresented in our local community. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the book toaster started with um, two of the authors that Meredith, et cetera, and they were my childhood friends that I published in uh, yeah. uh, I think at the end of 2017. And at that time, uh, mm -hmm. our local library had changed the policies where no one could sell a book in Jackson Public Libraries, unless they went through the Willie Morris Library, which is through a pro program called the Applause. So we felt that if the public library mm -hmm. was a, a public place used with tax dollars, that anybody should be able to use the libraries, which is in their bylaws, yeah. to take their book to. Absolutely. And so we created Absolutely. the book toasters so that we could create the Jackson Book Festival. And so we're building and, uh, as a venue so that we could band together and uh, mm -hmm. sell. So anyway, it was very discouraging to, to those two authors because they couldn't 
uh, sell their book in any of the libraries and they couldn't find, in some places was charging a lot. Mm -hmm. They just kind of get discouraged. And so they're not book toasters. Yeah. That's a real story um, uh, there. And then, um, yeah. uh, it's, it's I, well, I have had commercial success, but I have a publishing company, so I have to fight for and with my cohorts. Like, for instance, um, um, everybody has a different mm -hmm. level of success. And it's hard if you're a, a Black author to get in bookstores. You're, I mean, on the shelf. And it's, it's, it's hard to get in a mm -hmm. program like the applause, because then whether it's race or class, it doesn't matter. Most yeah. people that we have seen that go through that program are highly successful or famous. So that that's a that it's it's about underrepresentation and trying to get more representation by banding together. So that's what we did to deal with that issue, and and it is working. It really is working. Yeah. Yeah. That is, um, that's very encouraging and um, inspiring to hear that. Um, and I don't know which way you can go with it as far as um, what obstacles that you, um, or challenges that you face, but um, it shows that you um, didn't let that, those challenges stop you. You didn't get discouraged, especially um, seeing that, you know, you felt discrimination was going on and stuff like that so um but you kept on and you you didn't you didn't give up and and it's it's showing now that you know hey you can do anything you put your mind to yes it's gonna be a, a challenge yes it's gonna be something that's gonna, that you're gonna come up against but it's also uh uh can be used as a catalyst to get you through you know it, it's a it's a stepping stone to to go ahead and push you through it because if it's not in the challenges, you know, it's probably not going to be worth worth um um trying to trying to um to um to produce or gain or whatever. So I, I'm I'm grateful that you push through and that is 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 thriving and that um you know you're you're it's not just for you. It's open up to to everybody. You want you did you did the footwork. You 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 put the sweat and tears in it. So um I commend you for that and 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 your cohorts. So thank you for um thank you for the fight. That's that's what it's all about. Okay. Um and I also want to ask you, uh I said this is the your your public company's first one I ever knew of. Um and I don't know if, if it's any other ones here in Jackson. Um, do you know of any other um um publishing companies? Are there any other? Are you uh, could I name you as the only um publishing company here in, in Jackson? <laughs> oh no! There are hundreds of publishing companies. There are two kinds of publishing companies. Uh, uh, well, there are more. Than, I'm gonna name two. You have okay a, a publishing company that a person creates to publish their own book or books. Then you have a publishing company uh, like this one, a small press. Which produces less than five mm -hmm. times a year that takes other people to the commercial market. And that's what Meredith said. Now, what you were speaking of earlier, I think, when you said you think of New York, that they call them the big five. <laughs> the, um, the, the big five, you are you familiar with the um uh, Angie Thomas, mm -hmm. she's from Georgetown. The hatred is kind of bad. I don't know. Huh? You heard I'm her? saying the connection was kind of bad. It's kind of chopping you up. So I don't know if it's my my service here, but it's kind of chopping up right now. So hopefully it'll hopefully I can um, get back to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, as I was saying, there, there are several kinds of publishing companies, and there are millions in, in the United States, and there are hundreds of publishing companies in Jackson that people put together a company to produce their own 
book. And then uh, what, what I have is Meredith, et cetera, is a small press, which produces less than five titles a year. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we produce other authors. We have authors uh, in California. We have authors, mm -hmm. mo mo most of them are in uh, mm -hmm. Jackson, but uh, we have produced the works, one or two books of 17 authors. Uh, and this is small, this is called micro business because it's in my home and, and uh, I've been, uh, even my typing service is, is a micro business. Uh, I've been typing uh, here in my home office for 18 years. And um, so there are other uh, publishing companies okay. here in Jackson that produce other authors as well. And they're small presses because I think they produce uh, then you have uh, uh, over in Northeast Jackson, you have the um, Mississippi Press, University of Mississippi Press. That's a mid-sized press, I think, because they probably producing um, 30 or more books a year. But I, I'm not sure about the statistics. I know it's not a small press. And it's, and it's uh, uh, owned, I think it's owned by the University of Mississippi. Okay, I had to put it on mute. My folks, I came back home, so just put a disclaimer out there. Y'all hear some noise? I'm a little grandbaby. <laughs> just, just look, we're gonna get through it, though. We're gonna get through it, but yeah, so thank you for um, giving me that, that, um, um, the, the info about, um, you know, or the differences between the um, types of publishing. Um, so you know, and like I said, this is this is new to me, so everything you're saying is, is, is helping me to understand this type of um, business um, much better. So thank you for the explanation. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, and if there's one particular book that you, that I know that you um, wrote is uh, autobiography um, of Mr. James Meredith. Um, and it was titled Warrior, Warrior, and the American, and the America that uh, created him. Tell us who he is um, and how he influenced you, and why you chose to, to do a uh, autobiography on him, or or is it considered a memoir? Or no, the oh, memoir no, it's, is. It's a biography uh, about him um, from birth. Uh, the first one was done in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. I was working on that at the same time I was working on Marriage to Sin. I, um, this is the first edition. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, James Meredith, Warrior okay. and the America that created him. The, the subtitle is Warrior and the America that created him. And I chose Warrior because of our um, Choctaw Indian ancestor. And one of our ancestors was actually a, a Choctaw chief. But anyway, um, this first edition mm. was commercially published by um, Prager, uh, which is under the umbrella of ABC Clio, which produces textbooks. So this book mm -hmm. uh, was classified as a textbook by um, Prager Publishing. And so uh, in 2019, I um, obtained legally the right. They amended my contract and uh, allowed me the right to produce the second edition of this uh, book. And I produced it through my okay. press, Meredith, et cetera, which was really mm -hmm. a great accomplishment because uh, it oh. gave me more freedom and more control. Because in, in the first okay. edition, uh, they uh, only, uh, only allowed me to put eight photographs in here. And by the way, I had to pay for the use oh. of the historical photographs. Uh huh. And uh, mm -hmm. so when I used my publishing company, I was able to put 
Dozens of more photographs, including family photographs, in this edition. And I was able to um, put okay. my local, the local people that gave me endorsements on the back cover, which I was with my only disappointment with them. They would not put mm -hmm. my local, the local people, uh, uh -huh. William Winter, former governor William Winter, gave me an endorsement. Alice Thomas, yeah. Dale, the publisher of the Jackson Advocate, and Dorothy T. A steward, founder of Women for Progress. So, um, and also James Meredith is my my uncle and my mother's older brother. He's the first mm -hmm. published author in our family. His first book was uh, Three Years in Mississippi, and it was done in 1966. And uh, just recently, the uh, University of Mississippi Press produced. Um, Another edition of Three Years in Mississippi, which was the three, uh, there was a memoir about the three years in Mississippi when he was a student at Jackson College, it's now Jackson State University, where you attend, uh, before he started, before he became a student mm -hmm. at Ole Miss. Okay. Well, that's good. Over the years, I have. Um... You know, I knew that uh, that much about him. I knew who he was, and um, I knew that much about him. Um, and I've actually had a chance to meet him because you know he he'll he'll show up anywhere. He comes in so quiet and and um, you know just just laid back, but his presence is very um, uh, huge. You know, um, because he comes with just a lot of uh, strength, first of all, and uh, just so much history. He just walk in history. So, um, yo, I can't hear you. Mm. Oh, what's going on here? Yeah, you were saying he was walking his and then. Yeah, you got me. Okay, can, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. No, it's not mute. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay. It, it, it was muted. I guess it just froze because my, my uh, view oh, of my I'm... picture is, is frozen right now. So I'm just going to leave it alone. And, and actually, you're frozen. You're frozen too. So, um, but yeah, I, I was just saying, I uh, just, um, I knew that much about him, and then when I met you, and you, you know, told me that he was um, your relative, and I was looking at, okay, your name is Meredith, but his last name is Meredith, so I, I didn't, you know, get into all of that. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna keep it moving um, on that part. But um, I am um, glad to know that you had the the opportunity and, and the privilege to go ahead and uh, produce something on on your relative who um, have actually, you know, um, broke barriers and stuff and got a lot of history. But I want to go ahead and ask, um, can you still hear me, Miss Meredith? Yes. Okay, okay. All right. Um, you have a list, you, you kind of talked about some of the books and um, 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 doc, some of the work that you've done. Um, can you give us a quick um, list of um, each one of your um, pe body, uh, pieces of work uh, books and tell me what the um, the one that that's most significant, um, if you will, and and why 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 did you, why would you choose that as the most significant? Because I I can't remember which one was your first actual first one, but uh, just just kind of tell us what um, your your uh, books are. Okay, so the first book was uh, Married to Sin. Which I co wrote mm -hmm. with Dolly and Kaya. Okay. The second was James. Okay, Carter. which is this one? Uh huh. The mm -hmm. third one was Odyssey, which is a collection of my poetry and writings for 20 years. And mm -hmm. then the third one was uh, mm, the Three Nishida book. Okay. Yeah. Which I named. And which I got one. My, <laughs> my, my grandfather, uh, the, um, Moses Baird of Culture Arts. Children book series, and my grandfather was born in uh, 1891. Now, mm -hmm. my grandfather—that's James Meredith's father—but um, 
he is a I didn't know him because I mean he died when I was a baby, but uh he mm-hmm. is one of my uh influences, so is your aunt. Because uh, the goal of Community Library of Mississippi is to create an ins- institutions, to create library institutions. Uh, th- those would be uh, reading spaces um, in homes or like mm-hmm. we have the vir- virtual reading spaces and to eventually buy homes that will, uh, will be controlled by local community and, and will be places for intellectual activities like spelling bees, poetry contests, and read and after and reading and after school is you know the whole focus is of literacy. My grandfather mm-hmm. and small farmers in 1931 created a school, Cook Private School, that my uncle started when he was three years old. And the only way he could start going to that school is because he, but um, his uncle, his father started a school. And your aunt mm-hmm. Mary Harrison Coleman started an institution. She's 88 now. Mm-hmm. She started a school of barbering. Yeah. And she sold Earth. it to one of her students. So yeah. uh, that is, uh, to me, uh, some of the most important things that we could do in the era of George Floyd is mm-hmm. create institutions that we can control because we cannot control the institutions that the white power structure has. Yes. And I think that that's going to make it much better for our mm-hmm. communities. And sometimes our institutions need to be small because we got to mm-hmm. start somewhere. Because Disney oh, started yeah. in a barn and Amazon started in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. not always about big, beautiful lights. It's about uh-huh. starting small and growing and building. That's right. Oh, That's and the right. and the other two books that that we start, uh, did was um uh, the last two. My first book series, uh huh, two hundred and eight pages for. And when you become a teacher, I hope you can use it. This is a an activity book for preschool students, but it's all it has been used in JPS by second grade teachers, and then we have the um. My picture dictionary, which I wrote, mm-hmm. and your aunt is one of the contributors, and uh, Vicki and uh, my mother, uh, and also uh, William Tress of my picture dictionary. And uh, I was told that I'm one of the first Black women to create a picture dictionary in my community that uh, for the commercial market. This book okay. has, been, has been read by a lot of kids in the uh, Japanese market and just recently mm-hmm. someone in the Italian market bought this book and this book is in English. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. the best of the books. Okay. And when, which one you would, would stand out the most for you? That Because um, I know you're proud of all of them. But... Um, okay. Well, yeah. I think that you... Um, in terms of commercial success, it would be um, the one I wrote on my uncle who is famous. This uh-huh. book is in the textbook market in libraries around the world. Okay. It's in Germany, uh, Australia, South Africa, Liberia, Canada, uh, uh, mm-hmm. in, in places. It's in about eight libraries in the city of Jackson. And, uh, and then... Uh, it's also in uh, uh, it's it's a textbook, so it's it's uh, mainly uh, in that market, which is uh, and also um, uh, the the sheet of book, the second the sheet of book, the sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is it. No, the uh, this goes to the Smith Roberts. I mean, the uh, Mississippi yes. State Capitol uh, made it to its first library in the state of Mississippi. Okay. Okay, that one. Okay. Yeah, I got to get my other two. Is there another one that you want to, that you're planning to add to uh, Nishida's visits that, that you may want to share? If not, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just curious. I, I, yeah, there are several more Nishida books that, that I uh, 
plan on uh, doing, but uh -huh. I stopped doing the Nashida books as I did the third one because now I'm actually working on my first novel. So oh. I want to do that first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, we got and see, you you jumped ahead of a couple more questions I had. So you kind of, I was gonna ask, um, uh, what should we expect from you um, next or whatever? So you kind of letting us know that you're working on a novel. So we can be looking forward to um, uh, to to diving into that novel that you that you uh, working on that you're gonna finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that is wonderful. And you also elaborated, um, I was going to ask about the community library, um, um, you know, purpose and how it started, but you kind of, you know, told what, that, uh, what the purpose of it was and how it's a, an, an outlet for so many people and, and um, so many different people you connect with. Um, um, you mentioned uh, Mr. Uh, William Tress and, and um, um, Ms. Um, Jenkins and Ms. Hardy, who I, I, I'm so fond of, um, I met them on the initial, um, um, what was that, the poetry, right. what, what was that, what was that, um, Jackson Saturday, Book Festival. Jackson Book Festival, that was my first appearance, um, you know, I was invited to, uh, to join y'all, and I, I absolutely, I had a good time on there, and, and it wasn't just, adults on that it was the children that was just engaging and i'm like this is you know it was it was different um um age groups and different um backgrounds and and you had someone there doing a spoken word and she had behind her she had the pop song and i'm like this is this is so cool i said miss meredith you have introduced me to another world that i didn't even realize i had an interest in so i i, I appreciate that so I've, I've been stuck with you ever since. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so basically the community um, library, uh, Mississippi, and you have the, the um, other uh, things up under there, like the festival, like you said, it it, uh, it falls up under the umbrella of the, of the community library, Mississippi. Oh yeah, well, can I read those out? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so... Community okay. Library in Mississippi was established in July of 2019. Okay. Uh, the main goal, as I said, is uh, eventually for, for us to uh, be able to raise funds to buy houses in communities and, uh, and use them for intellectual activities for neighborhood mm -hmm. children, a place where they can walk to and read a book or yeah. listen to an audio book, or and uh, or and uh, or learn how to make a biscuit, or, or anything uh, that that they can engage in, where the elders are connected mm -hmm. with the, with the children in the community. So that's one goal. And the other, um, we have the Learning Tree Book Club is one of the programs of the Community Library of Mississippi. The Book Coasters, the Jackson Book mm -hmm. Festival, reading fairs. Um, Book giveaways, community. We have uh, speaker series, community speaker series, book toaster speaker series, local history speaker series, and the mm -hmm. um, history speaker series. And then we have two educational products, which I've mentioned already: my first mm -hmm. book series and my picture dictionary. Okay. Okay. That. Um... You kind of summed up everything um, um, I was going to ask as far as um, the, um, the, the where well, you gave the purpose, but the um, outreach that it's doing and um, is really um, having a, a, a platform for children to to um, tap off it, you know, to to engage in and, and uh, contribute what they know about um, history and, and books and their love for books. Because I enjoy those children. Those children, they didn't they didn't get intimidated by um, us uh, us older people on there. They they share what they shared and they um, you know they were confident in what they were doing. And so I, I learned a lot from them. So it's it's just good to know that. Um, this this um, organization, um, uh, nonprofit or organization, is there to just invite 
uh, people from all different different walks, people who just never really had had a love for reading. They can come in and, and, and just learn so many different things. I mean, every time, ever since I've been on the videos um, with you all, um, I, I have learned something. Just the history of, of um, our history right here in Jackson. We don't have to really go too far to learn something more about our um, our city and, and, and what has taken place in, in the, over the years in, um, in our town. Um, so I see how it is effective. Um, and how it's uh, it, it doesn't discriminate at all, you know. But um, and I see that you know it's it's um, it, it's not just it's, it's not about books; it's about caring and sharing as well. So, um, but do you think that more people are reading now or reading less, uh, especially during the pandemic? Um, um, you know, just oh. just overall, I mean, it's nothing that we got to find facts about or whatever. But um, just you know, during the pandemic, how, how you think is it has changed the um, the routine of how your community um, organization ha had been functioning? And um, you do you think the readers have picked up? You know, have they picked up, or is it less? Or how how you how would you look at it? Well, actually, um, we started. The Book Toaster started the Jackson Book Festival, and the, our first book festival was in the community room, which is smaller, and we had the vendors mm -hmm. out in the hall. The second one uh, was uh, Center Court, and then, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which was in uh, February the 8th of 2020, and mm -hmm. March the 11th, twenty twenty. The entire country shut down. Yeah. And we actually missed one of our, we used to read in a free space at the Jackson Medical Mall once mm -hmm. a month for one hour and a half. We used to read um, in person. And I would take a suitcase of books to the Jackson Medical Mall, sit them on the table, mm -hmm. and whoever came that week, sometimes if somebody was getting their taxes done, the children would come over and read with us. While their parents okay. was over to get there, or somebody uh, walk about, or just some of our members uh, would, would come, and some of the children, you know, ch children, but you can read in five minutes. Some of them could read um, eight books in an hour and a half. Oh wow! And so when we went virtually, the whole country was shut down. So there were um, adults and children. Reading with we had a two week reading fair in July, mm -hmm. and you know nobody couldn't go nowhere. So we, I think that that had impact on our participation. We had great participation. People, good, good. Uh, we had children and adults who were reading with us virtually, and so we would do would do the same style when you came to the book club, five minutes per person. And what yeah. we found out was that. Forcing everybody to read together was a whole different type of sharing because at the yeah. book club in person, the children were reading whatever they were reading, Dr. Seuss or whatever, and yeah. the adults could be were sometimes reading, uh, they could be reading uh, Mary to Sin or whatever they wanted to read what they were uh, reading. But the virtual reading is a shared experience where. You could be learning something about a gold man that a child is reading about, and they could mm -hmm. be reading about a character that you're reading about, say, Smith Robinson. Yeah. Because you're forced in the book club now to listen to each reader. So the mm -hmm. seven year old reader is being engaged by the adult reader, and the adult reader is being engaged by the young reader and the shared knowledge. It's crossing mm -hmm. from generations. And I think yeah. that in, in expanding, we, mm -hmm. we uh, Vicki and I just, uh, the board voted to send books to children uh, in Tennessee. I said, uh -huh. we realize we're going to go mail some books to children in Tennessee. And last month, we mailed books to book club members in Central America. And we had, uh, we had the, the, uh, the young girl she lives in Belize. She has a little accent. Mm -hmm. Before 
before she, she's in the fifth grade and she's in Belize, which is Central America below Mexico. She became a member in December. And at that time, her aunt said she, she wasn't reading at all. She would go to her library and not find anything that interests her. Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband and I watched the movie Selena. And so after she joined, uh-huh. I, I told the board, I said, I, I think we should uh, mail, them, mail her some books. And I thought about it. I said, well, uh, Cesar Chavez, I picked him and I picked uh, Selena. And her mother said she was loved that Selena book because she already knew. Selena was an icon to her. Yeah. Okay. So good. Children, good. She connected. Children want to read books about characters mm-hmm. that look like them and that they can yeah. identify with. That's why a community library is so important institution to the community because the public library doesn't always reach the child right. of color. Right. Right. Because right. it doesn't always have. The, the, the you, you got to be greeted by the, the right person mm-hmm. uh, when you get ready to read. And they got to introduce you to the right books to, to yeah. engage you as a reader. And now she has been reading more. We even sent her a history book about Latin America. Uh-huh. Look at it. So she's been learning about Latin America. She read some well, before last, a little bit of book about Latin America. <laughs> I want her to read some more of that because I really wasn't showing it. Oh, look, was, was she the one that uh, went before me last, was it last, yeah, last Saturday? It, that yeah. wasn't her, was it? That was her. Wait a minute, she's, she's bright-skinned with, with, with long hair. Yeah. She, uh, she had an accent. She lives in, uh-huh. she said, I live in Belize. She, you know, uh-huh. she has an uh, accent. That's her. She's a... She joined our book club virtually in, in December. That that is amazing, Miss uh, Meredith. That is so amazing. I mean, because it's really it's it's crossing borders. It's crossing borders. So it, it's definitely effective. It's it's definitely working. This this, this organization, it's it's oh, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it because I, I had a firsthand experience um of you know, sitting there and I had a chance to read um, my five minutes of, of the book that I chose. And um, so just to, to, to see everybody sharing their own different book, you know, of their choice and, um, you know, read and then they gave their their um, overview of it and, you know, answered the different questions. But uh, I felt it because I really wasn't sure and, and not um, just um, with this um Zoom type of thing, but you know how some of your your, your jobs may have the Zoom in, or it may be other um, things, you know, personal things that you might join a uh, uh, or, or think about getting on a Zoom um, video or meeting about. I, I wasn't sure of how the book thing was going to go, but I always view Charles' um, videos. It's like you always engage, and I'm like, you know, how does that work? I, I feel like. I would get bored very easily, but I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored because I, I feel like because this is something that I didn't really think that I had an interest in, um, you know, it, being a part of a, a, of a book type thing or, or festivals and stuff like that. But, you know, because I normally just read stuff on my own, but I at one time had just kind of stopped reading books. You know, I, I just, I, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's other reasons why, but my focus is, has been recalibrated and I'm just, you know, just kind of drawn into what I enjoy doing and I, and this couldn't have come at a better time. So, yeah, I got a firsthand experience. So if anybody wants to, um, uh, you know, be a part of this, y'all check Miss Meredith out. Check, check this, um, check this uh, book toaster um, series out. It's, it's very good. And I, I think it can be a... Uh, Excuse me, Miss Taylor, can you come and get your baby? Come and get Granny's baby. I apologize, y'all. I uh, apologize. I'm but, getting in where I fit in. <laughs> okay, well, that's, yeah. what I, that's what I want. I, I thank you for that because this is how I would like the audience to support us. If yeah, you would like yeah. to help us uh, 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 buy books for our members because now 
our members are spread out. Mm -hmm. Please make a donation to Community Library of Mississippi. I, I, I'm gonna. Uh, I have it. We have a Facebook page. We have a uh, a Twitter page, and then we're on uh, our. We have a blog page on Meredith, etc. Backslash Community Library of Mississippi. And uh, and if you would would like to join. Our book club, anybody could join our book club, Learn Tree Book Club. It's for people ages six to 60 plus. And you see, we had a five-year-old reader. We couldn't hear what she was saying, but she was reading what she Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. So really it's, it's for anybody, you know. Um, anybody. And so, mm -hmm. and then, and then um, we have um, a speaking series. Um, and, and if you are a writer, or mm -hmm. an author or poet, we will invite you to join the book toasters because the whole goal of the book toasters is to be a support group for writers, for uh, for them to uh, sp uh, speak and uh, virtually or in person, so that they can share their work or either share their work with with one another and for us to be support each other in our writings and our books and our works and our po poetry. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, y'all have it. Um, she um has give you the um how you can locate her and how you can um, be a part of it, how you can contribute. Um, because it is it, it's, it's it's for everybody. It's it's um definitely a, a great um uh, organization, a great fellowship, um, you know, great exposure, um, introduction of, of your your new uh, found um, craft or or, or um, love for poems and and, and spelling bees, you know the, the just all type of things that's dealing with with literature and um, and um, uh, literacy and um, um, your your books and stuff, your, you know, writing your books and and memoirs, just just anything, just anything you want to contribute. I think I, I bet you anything is gonna fit. Um, 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 very um, securely in this in this um, organization. Okay, and and this I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up because uh, time is uh, has progressed a lot. Um, um, history. Uh, not only do you have um, your your um, bookstore, your publishing company um, composed of your books and other people's books, um, but you also have a, a, a uh, um, a history, um, just just a, um, a lengthy and a um, full history, um, knowledge of a lot of history, not just here. Uh, what, what, when did you know that you were interested, really interested in in history? Because when I when I visited you your store, you kind of you know gave me the the, the mini tour, and I'm like, this is. I mean, you had so much, and and I couldn't just learn everything right then. When, when did you know? Because you you do have a you you are deeply rooted. <laughs> you are deeply rooted. You have a lot of jewels of, of history um, in you, and um, yeah. So I just want people uh -huh. to, to to get to know you. So how did you? Okay, so um, actually, um, when I was in my twenties, um, I was a fiction reader. Okay. Um, I, I I love to read, and I like. Black authors, you know, Alice Walker, um, uh, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, um, B.B. Camp, just different ones. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, and Toni Morrison, Alice yeah. Walker <laughs> and Toni Morrison <clears throat> introduced me to history. I think reading Alice Walker, I became familiar with uh, Patrice Lumumba. In one of her books. Uh -huh. And then I started reading nonfiction. And then when I became a children's book author, the Nishida book, mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy Stewart wrote the introduction for that book. And I learned that only 3% of children's books included Black characters. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I took the book on tour and started going, at that time you go to any library and sell and speak. And uh, I, mm -hmm. um, I started learning from teachers and, and parents that were coming to the um, 
events that our children weren't being taught local history, period. Mm -hmm. and some of them didn't know who Meg Ambers was. Uh, they mm -hmm. didn't know who James Meredith was. They didn't know about family mm -hmm. name or anything. So I, I did this. Uh, I wanted to expand my Nishida character to, to teach mm -hmm. more history and culture. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, uh, I'm a reader and a, a, and a book collector. And I mm -hmm. read more now than I'm older. I read more <laughs> nonfiction. I read yeah. about history and biographies and memoirs uh, now. So that's how I learned a lot about. And then uh, before I started writing the book on my uncle, I was doing family history, which is my family history is a lot of history. Uh -huh. Because in, when I did, when I wrote this book, I interviewed 60 people, including my mother and my uncle's uh, older cousins, mm -hmm. some of them much older than them, because they told me stories about 1929. And oh, my wow. uncle, when he was born in 1929. So I learned a lot about history. And, uh, and I had to do a lot of research to even write a book that's placed in the textbook market. Mm -hmm. and I had to do a lot of research to do the Nishida books. Okay. So that's where the history uh, comes in. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Um, what What would you tell, uh, and you may have done this before, what would you tell a um, an aud auditorium or a, a room full of um, young people, um, you know, about what, what would you tell them uh, about learning their history or the importance of it? Um, well, and how they can, yeah. what would you say to, to them? I, well, I want to say this. Um, I spoke in an auditorium full of children at Obano High School in Greenville, Mississippi, and Lynette mm -hmm. Stanford, who is also a, a Learning Street Book Club member, and her grandson in Greenville. She's a retired teacher from Obano High School. And I mm -hmm. talked to the kids, uh, I, I was just guest speaking for Black History one. A uh, year, two years ago, and when I tell you that those kids were stumping mm -hmm. in the auditorium in the bleachers when I was talking to them about Black history, I just, I just couldn't. It like, it like, um, like they were at a game or something. <laughs> but oh. I, you know, I just, I, I just was telling them that how important reading is because. 150 years ago, it was illegal for us to read and write. Yeah, and, and it yeah. wasn't even 50 years ago that we couldn't go to the library on State Street where the biggest book collection was. And Richard mm -hmm. Wright, he read all the time, and he only had an eighth-grade education, but he became a best-selling author from reading. And I was telling them how important it is to read and to study and to, to learn, and that if they wanted to be the mayor of the city mm -hmm. of Greenville, that they need to go down there in City Hall and learn what's going on and keep going until they learn what's going on and that they needed to be the best that they could be. Yes. And the and, and my grandfather uh, had a saying that the best and the expert is always in demand and will always have a job and something to do. Because when you are the best at anything you do, mm. people are going to call you and want yeah. your services. And that's what it takes to rise and to succeed. And that's what makes, uh, that's the difference between being great and being average. If you're great and you're good, you're, you're going to do well. And that's what you got to strive for. You got to strive to be the top of whatever you do. Ooh. Miss Merritt, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> I hope y'all felt that. <laughs> that 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 is rich. That is rich, and it's it's so true. And um, you know, profound how you just you know just just lay it out there. And I I really wish you know I hope that um our youth will 
And I know it's a lot of them that they are they are reading and reading like they're supposed to and probably above, but it, they also a lot of them who who are not reading, who are not being introduced to um, books and in particular books about their culture. Um, so I, I just wish that um, um, that a light will be lit to to fire fire us up, fire us back up, and fire our children up because they're gonna they they're watching us. You know whether we know it or not, we know they're in front of the games and stuff, but they're watching us. Um, so if we we continue to um, highlight and, and um, stress the importance of um, um, the the importance of um, reading and and uh, you know being um, literate and, and, and conscious of your culture. I, I believe they'll catch on too because um, we got to, the generations are steady passing, so we got to be able to to add something to it, and they they also can be a part of of making history, you know, it's a lot of things that have transpired since they've been here, you know, since, since the younger ones have, have been here since we have been here. So we, we all can, we all can contribute to um, our history and, and just add on to it and just keep the jewels going um, to, uh, to pass down to the next generation. So I, I just, you know, my, my, my hope and prayer is that our children just, um, just come on back and, and, and let's get to read and let's get to, um, writing and uh, just just find you know create new new things be innovative uh, be innovative um so I, I i really thank you for um uh, your your brief synopsis of um uh, of everything you've done well, it's really not everything but you have uh, kind of touched on um the things that you have um that you're working on and, and that you're engaging and promoting and stuff like that so um i just I uh, hope that you know people can go back and watch this video and um and that they can find some um you know if they have questions they can reach out to you reach out to me and I'll you know if I can answer anything um we can definitely um uh, um uh, you can definitely you know do that so I think that's all I have Miss Meredith I really appreciate you I really appreciate you and, and is it anything else you would like to say all right, sweetheart. All right, Granny, gonna get you in a minute. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. About okay. That. So, um, my the final thing that that I would like to say is, this is an intellectual revolution. Yes. Intellect matters. Let's read. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that like, that sounds like I'm even going a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. And thank you yeah, so yeah. much for thank you for the um um uh interview and um <laughs> uh, once I uh, finish the other part uh uploaded, I'll send it to you so you can uh, share. This has been a wonderful interview. You really okay. did dig, well, you uh dig uh, was digging deep. And yeah, okay, we were yeah, the and next in next Saturday is uh, my interview with you. To mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, share your soul and introduce you as a um, a, a poet and a songwriter, and uh, okay. also are we gonna do that too? Uh, yeah, that that should work out fine. Okay, that should well, work so, out. Yeah. So uh, 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 next week, um, the book toaster speaker series will uh, be uh, I will be inter interviewing a new book toaster, Miss LaRonda Coleman, a recording <laughs> artist. And uh, a songwriter just like her aunt, Mary Hansen Cole. All right, now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So well, you have a wonderful I look, evening. I know you're back. Okay. Now. You to get off yeah, this. Get yeah. off this. <laughs> I know. I know. The, the right, life man. of a new grandmother, but I, I appreciate every moment. I, I value every moment. But anyway, right. you take care and everybody be blessed. And uh, we, we'll see y'all on the next time. Thank you, Miss right. Meredith. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. You too. You too. Mm-hmm.